Today, we're diving deep into something that's got the tech world buzzing. China's strategic moves, especially their laser focus on Intel. Mm. We've got this leaked intelligence report, uh, pretty fascinating stuff, and some expert analysis that really breaks down the potential, uh, well, the fallout, let's just say that. And we'll also be looking at a piece that compares Intel and Apple as targets, which I think will be pretty interesting (laughs) to see how that plays out. Yeah, I think what's so interesting about all of this, you know, is that uh, it really reveals how China is thinking long term strategically, mm-hmm. especially in how they want to be technologically independent. Yeah, for sure. Because, I mean, when you hear tech giant and China together, you know, most people just immediately think of Apple, right? Yeah. I mean, they have a massive market share in China. Their supply chains are all tangled up there. Seems like the obvious target. It does. Yeah. From the outside. But China's playing like a much deeper game here. Yeah. It's not like they just want to score points against Apple's profits or something. Right. They're after something way bigger. They want to basically control the semiconductor industry. So you're saying this is bigger than just like tariffs on iPhones. This is about uh, what controlling the core of all technology. Exactly. Remember that Made in China 2025 plan? They've been like pouring money into building up their own chip industry and it's starting to work. I mean, look at Huawei. They've got chips that can rival the best from the U.S. Okay, but can they actually replace a company like Intel, though? I mean, Intel's technology is in everything, from our laptops to huge data centers. I think it's not about replacing them right away. It's more like strategically weakening them. China knows Intel is vulnerable, Yeah. right? They see AMD catching up with those Zen chips, especially in data centers where Intel used to be king. And honestly... Uh, Intel trying to get into the GPU market, well, that's not really been a huge success. So is this investigation into Intel a sign that they think they can, like, deliver a knockout blow, like what happened with Micron a while back? That's the question, isn't it? It's definitely interesting that this is all happening while Intel is already struggling financially, you know. They're losing market share, there's tough competition, and they've been reporting losses. It's almost like, uh, how do you say it, kicking them while they're down, going after what strengths they have left. Yeah, I think that's a good way to put it. This leak Intel report even uses this phrase, uh, demonstrative effect, which I think is really interesting. It seems like China wants to make an example out of Intel. Okay, hold on. Explain that a bit more. What does demonstrative effect actually mean? Well, it's like a message to the other tech companies out there, a warning. It's China basically saying, this is what happens if you side with the U.S. on manufacturing, try to move production away from us, and look what happens to you. Yeah, and we've already seen companies like TSMC uh, being hesitant to build those big ship factories in the U.S. And even Intel's own attempts to increase production in Arizona, those haven't been totally smooth sailing, you know? Exactly. China is sending a clear signal that working with the U.S. on tech manufacturing is risky. They're basically using Intel as a pawn in this bigger game. So what is that bigger game then? Like if we zoom out and look at the bigger picture, what's China's ultimate goal here? Ultimately, they want to like completely reshape the global tech landscape to benefit them. By going after Intel, they want to make companies hesitant to invest in U.S.-based chip manufacturing, which has already been in decline for decades. So they basically want to make sure that made in China is on the most advanced tech, not just clothes and toys. Exactly. It's about like moving the power in the tech world. And they're not just doing it through force. They're strategically investing and building up their own talent pool. You know, they're playing the long game and they're prepared to wait it out. But is this just about uh, economics or is there more to it? I mean, this report uses some strong language. It says China has a trump card to finish off Intel, which sounds pretty aggressive. It does, doesn't it? That's the question everyone's asking. Yeah. Is China actually trying to destroy Intel for good? Or are they just trying to pressure the U.S. into giving them what they want? Because they could definitely do some serious damage, that's for sure. But would completely destroying a company like Intel actually be good for them? Yeah, that's the tricky thing. They need to apply enough pressure to get what they want, Mm. but not so Mm. much that it backfires. It's a tough balancing act. And honestly, things are changing all the time. It's wild, right? This whole thing goes way beyond just Intel in the US. It's like the whole global tech scene is involved. Things that happen in one place, like this investigation, can have a ripple effect everywhere on companies, industries, everything. So kind of like um, a big Jenga tower. One wrong move and the whole thing comes crashing down. And even though they're having problems, Intel's still a pretty important piece of that tower.
Exactly. Intel's tech, I mean, it's everywhere, right? In, in our computers, the data center, all the essential stuff, it's all running on their chips. If they get seriously weakened, the impact could hit the whole tech industry, maybe even further. Okay, so let's just focus on Intel for a minute. Yeah. Like, what are the real world consequences if China really goes after them? Well, the first thing would be their revenue. Losing access to China, which is almost 30% of their income, would be a huge blow. They might have to make big cuts, you know, in research, manufacturing, even jobs. And they're already in a tough spot financially. Wouldn't this just make them fall further behind their competitors, make it harder to recover? It's like the more China squeezes, the weaker Intel gets and the easier they are to target. That's the danger, isn't it? It can create a downward spiral that's really hard to escape. For Intel, this could be the difference between, you know, getting back on their feet and just completely going under. Yeah, it shows that even these giant tech companies can fall. This whole situation makes you wonder, like, what does this all mean for the U.S. tech world as a whole? This is a wake up call for sure. It shows how vulnerable the tech sector is when it relies so much on global supply chains and foreign markets. If China can take down Intel, it basically says that any company, no matter how big, is a target. And it's bigger than just Intel, right? This is about how crucial semiconductors are. They're like the foundation of the whole digital economy. Exactly. Everything is built on semiconductors, phones, laptops, cars, even planes. Whoever controls how they're made has a huge advantage. And right now, the U.S. is in danger of falling behind. So what can the U.S. do to counter this? Well, there are some options, but they all have their own issues. One way is to negotiate, try to cool down the trade tensions and take the pressure off Intel. But it means both sides have to give a little, and it's not clear if either one is willing to do that. The U.S. could also just focus on making more chips at home, right? The CHAPS Act was a start, but maybe not enough. And like we've seen with TSMC and Intel's own struggles, building those advanced chip factories in the U.S. is easier said than done. It's a complicated mess. No easy answers. The U.S. needs a real plan, you know? One that covers not just making the chips, but also the research, training workers, even national security stuff. Wow, so this has gotten way bigger than just some trade disagreement. We're oh. talking about the future of tech, global power struggles, the core of the digital world. It's pretty high stakes. You got it. The choices made now will have consequences for years to come. We're at a turning point. And the whole world is watching to see what happens. Yeah, and we'll be here breaking it all down. But before we get into the long-term stuff, maybe let's consider some other perspectives. Could there be any good things, any silver linings that come out of this whole Intel China situation? It's easy to just think about all the bad stuff that could happen, but let's try to look at this from a different angle. Could there actually be, I don't know, some good things, some positives that might come out of this situation with Intel and China? Yeah, I think that's a really good point. I mean, the risks are definitely real, but... Maybe this could be a chance for some positive change, you know, like if Intel is really pushed into a corner and they have to fight to survive, maybe that'll lead to some big innovation. We might see breakthroughs in chip design or manufacturing that help the whole industry. So it's like that saying, uh, necessity is the mother of invention. Exactly. Sometimes you got to face some hardship mm -hmm. to really think outside the box and come up with new solutions. If Intel can get through this, they might come out even stronger and more resilient. That's a cool way to look at it. And this whole thing could push the semiconductor industry to be more diverse. If companies get nervous about depending too much on one country or supplier, maybe we'll see a move towards a more global supply chain, one that's more spread out and can handle disruptions. That's really important. We've seen how these global tensions can mess up those supply chains. Maybe this crisis is what we need to move away from that model where just a few companies control everything. We could see more regional players, new technologies, and a more balanced global landscape overall. So even though there are a lot of risks and challenges coming up, maybe some good things can come out of this too. Oh, for sure. I think this is a turning point for tech and it's too early to say how it'll all end up. Yeah. But one thing's certain, the future of technology is wide open and the competition is just going to get tougher. Well, we've gone over a lot today, haven't we? We talked about why Intel is in the spotlight, what China might be trying to do, and what could happen to both Intel and the whole U.S. tech world. But before we wrap up, I want to leave you with something to think about. If China really does manage to weaken Intel, what message does that send to all the other tech companies out there? That's a question everyone should be asking. This could be a sign of a big shift in who has the power when it comes to technology. It makes you wonder, are we moving into a new era of competition? 
where the battles aren't fought with weapons, but with chips and algorithms. It's a little scary, right? We're living in a crazy time, exciting and a little terrifying at the same time. It really is. But one thing's for sure. We'll be here to keep breaking down these complicated issues and help you understand this ever-changing world. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. Keep exploring, keep asking questions, and keep digging deeper.